Welcome to my 14-day uh, subtle med meditation boost. Today is day nine, um, and I'm going to continue talking just a little bit more about neuroscience and mantra, and also I'm going to um, take a little bit of time today to talk about this really special understanding of, of what happens with mantra. Um, but I want to go back to what we talked about yesterday. Remember how your brain changes, and your brain changes uh, in a way, in an acronym that I like to call your friend, <laughs> F-R-E-N, your friend. So friend is, it changes through focused awareness, it changes through repetition, it changes through um, emotional engagement, and then it, it uh, or passion, and then it changes through novelty. And so you can see that the yogis kind of understood that formula with mantra, because mantra is repetition, it's focused awareness, you have to train your attention, it, it should have some special or sacred quality to it, so that gives it that emotional piece. And then the last piece might be kind of interesting to contemplate, this idea of novelty. How is mantra novel? You know, I've been using several different mantras, but one mantra I use every day when I meditate, and I've been using it every day for 20, I don't know, 25 years, more than 25 years. So how is that novel? Well, one of the ways you can think about this is that you do the same thing, that's the repetition, but you do it differently, and that's what the novel part is. So every time you sit with your mantra, it's like having a you know, new opportunity to discover something new about your relationship with yourself. Um, one way to think about it is that the inner universe, your inner capacity for reflection is as vast and fascinating as this external universe, right? There's so much that goes on inside. And if we sit with meditation and with mantra and we approach it with that, Kind of an attitude, then we bring the novelty into our practice every time. So the other piece I wanted to talk about this morning is this idea of mantra chaitanya, which means, chaitanya means consciousness. So the, the consciousness of mantra, and what this means, the way that, the best way I could describe it is, well, first of all, it means that the mantra is always present, but the best way I can describe it is, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but have you ever had a uh, an experience of listening to a song? It's often like a bad song from the 70s, but listening to a song and then having that song stuck in your head or playing in your head over and over again, right? Um, my son and I have been watching The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt on Netflix, and like so we're walking around singing, Unbreakable, hey love, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the the tune is so catchy, you know the the theme song of that of that show is so catchy, and we just think the show is hilarious, and we roll around laughing and singing the song. So, <laughs> how does this relate to mantra? The way it relates to mantra is that when you get that kind of a thing stuck in your head, your the way your brain is designed is, is particularly it hooks into sound rhythm. And some, um, and when there's some sort of flow to it, it hooks right into it. So if you have a sound of your mantra that's really sweet and kind of flowing, then that's a that's a way to to um, you know to to leverage that natural tendency of your mind. And what it does is it leverages that natural tendency of your mind to remember something that's special and sacred to you, not just the theme song of you know, some, some Netflix show you're watching, but, but it helps you to leverage the, you know, that, that uh, something sacred and special. And when you have this constant flow of mantra in your mind, even when you're not thinking about it, it's just there, it's kind of flowing through your mind, it's a really special state. The, the yogis call this a very elevated state of mantra chaitanya, which means the consciousness of the mantra has sort of succeeded or is, is taking over. So, for our practice today, um, let's go into our mantra again, and it might be a mantra that you've been using, or it might be a new one, because you kind of need to find the one that feels like something you can stick with. And um, yesterday, I put a note up on my Facebook page, which is called Subtle Health, with a list of mantras. So you're welcome to try one of those mantras from the list. Um, if you can't find that 
that posting on Facebook, just send me a message and I'm happy to share it with you. If you're on Instagram, just go over to my, my Facebook um, page. It's called Subtle Health. Okay. So, um, so take a moment, soften those shoulders. I love meditating outside. It's a great place to be when you're, you know, especially in the spring, there's not too many bugs around. Soften your shoulders, soften the muscles in your face. You're welcome to soften or close your eyes. Notice how the breath starts to flow in and out through your nose. And then we'll begin to hear the sound of the mantra in your breath, in the back of your throat. As if it's coming from all the cells in your body. As if your breath and your heart and the nervous system, everything in your body resonates with the sound and hears the sound and produces the sound. Right? So you're making the sound and you're hearing the sound. And then also, from everything that's around you, from outside of yourself, the sound also starts to flow into you. So you're, it's as if the whole universe is vibrating with the sound of mantra. You're welcome to continue this breathing for a little while after I turn off the video or try it again later today sometime. You want to start meditation with a, a, a few minutes and then increase those minutes every day if you can or every few days um, until you get up to around 20 or more, 20 or more minutes of practice. Um, tomorrow I would like to spend some time talking about the practicalities of meditation. So like how do you make it happen in your life? And then we'll continue with our practice. Thank you for being here and namaste.